piece of advice that I ever got about drawing. In fact, the advice that changed my life. Holy frickin' clickbait. I'm making this video because the top comment on the last video I made, the AMA, was about the advice that I shared right at the end. And I think I want this channel to have a little bit of that element where there's a bit of utility for other creative people or just other people in general. So, hope you like it. Buckle up. Apologies about the background and handheld mic. I'm still in Sri Lanka, so we've still got the newsreader in the middle of nowhere vibe. But heck, let's go. In 2016, I was a totally different guy. I was still what I would call creative, but I was very, very scattered about it. And at the time, I was working for a guy called Mark Shatner, who was an eccentric artist. Him and his wife, Jilly, would make these dog and rabbit people sculptures. You might have seen them. They're pretty stunning. And what they do is just that. All they do is make these dog and rabbit sculptures. Sometimes they're on a moped. They make them as paintings, homewares, you name it. Now, I really liked Mark Shatner. I really liked what he was about. And I was really impressed with the fact that he managed to make art his full-time gig. One time I said, how many days a week do you make art? And he responded without even thinking it was weird. He goes, all of them. And I was like, seven? And he goes, yeah, all seven. Why? At the time, that blew my mind. It wouldn't blow my mind now because now I know what it's like to find something that you love enough to do seven days a week where it doesn't even feel like work. It feels like a day's wasted if you haven't done it. But at the time, I was like, dude, what? Anyway, his passion was super contagious. Very fun, wacky, creative guy. Me, though, I was kind of young and angsty, and I did what young, angsty people do best. I complained. I'd be all like, Mark, I don't get it. You're an artist. You, you, you make all this stuff. You've kind of got this whole world, this whole stuff that you can just milk and do all the time. I feel creative. Why can't I do that? Just nice, whingy language. And one day, I guess the complaining had got to an all-time high, and he gave me a bit of tough love. He said, Campbell, you know what your problem is? One day you write a song, the next day you write a poem, and then the third day you do a drawing, and none of it adds up to anything. All you're doing is laying a single brick of a million different houses and expecting that one day it'll magically become a mansion. It's not going to happen. It hit me like a ton of mislaid bricks, man. He'd identified the problem perfectly. I was scattered. Casey Neistat has a little bit about this as well, where he says, You can do 10 things to like the first degree, like this right here, and that's how well you'll do all 10 things. Or you can do one thing to the 10th degree right there, and look how much better you do that. Naturally, my next question was, all right, Mark, we know what's wrong with me. How do I fix it? And this is where the advice came in. He just said, draw the same thing every single day. He's like, you've got so many mediums, I'll pick one for you, it's gonna be drawing. And what you're gonna do is just draw the exact same thing every single day. Just try it for a year and then we'll reassess. I didn't have anything to lose and this guy knew a lot more about art than I did. So I took his advice. The only problem left to solve was what I was gonna draw. And as Mark's advice was marinating in my head as I walked home from work, I walked through the park that I always walked through and it was full of this one particular bird called the Ibis. You might know the Ibis as the Egyptian god Thoth, or if you're from Australia, you'll know them as the bin chicken. They're a big white bird with a black head who hangs around rubbish bins and eats trash. For me, they just seem like the perfect metaphor for humanity. We could fly, we could do anything we want, and yet we roll around in bin juice. I loved it. Once known as the white ibis, the species has evolved into a superior scavenger. From the city's rooftops, the bin chicken has spotted something. Bins. So I went to the pub and I drew this. Then I drew this, then I drew this. I ended up drawing nine ibises that night and I posted them to Instagram. And I started to kind of get a sense that I was building something. I started to get a sense that I was laying bricks of the same house. But that was only the first day. The second day rolls around and I draw another ibis. There's another brick in my house. Third day, another ibis. Fourth, fifth, tenth, twentieth, thirtieth day. I just keep drawing these ibises like Mark Shatner said. And you know what happened? I got really bored of drawing ibises. But I still wanted to commit to the advice. So I was like, well, shoot, if I'm going to draw ibises, I may as well make them interesting. Screw it. I'm going to add jokes. So I start adding jokes to the ibises. Just little comments about my city, little bits of social commentary. And I get really into that. I get really into the social commentary that comes along with the ibises. To the point where the ibises, by the hundredth ibis, just starts to take a bit of a back seat to said social commentary. And it's at this point that I realise the brilliance of Mark Shatner's advice. He wasn't telling me to draw an ibis. He was just telling me to start. Because once I start, only then will I find the thing 
that I'm looking for. 